Igogon, monarch, reveals all. Evicted Saki Fulani hired machineries to attack us in Igogon. Hello, my wonderful people. The uh, monarch in Igogon, that's like the Oba, the traditional ruler in Igogon, said it was the evicted uh, Saki Fulani. He left with a promise to them that he was going to come back. And what they did to him, he will do to people. He will ensure that he destroy houses, lives, property, and he was the one who, you know, um, hired machineries. We told you yesterday that there is a serious cover-up going on, of which the federal government sadly are part of it. That immediately the thing happened and um, the information started coming up that the Saki Fulani that have been sent to uh, 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 Kwara is the one behind it. Guess what the Attorney General, because he's the chairman of the Fulani headsmen, sent for him in a pretense for a disguised, sent for him that he should come over to Abuja. And what is Zeb's plan? Let him come over to Abuja so people will seemingly feel that something is going on. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if this is your first time. God bless you. Let's get all the details. Evicted Saki Fulani hired machineries to attack us, Igogo. Ma Monarch alleges uh, statements by the Igogo. Traditional Monarch Oba Lassisi has accused the evicted Saki Fulani of sponsoring the deadly attack on his community in Igbarapo, North Local Government Area of Oyo State, at the weekend. Oba Adeyo made the accusation yesterday while featuring on Ibadan Bay's Fresh FM 105.9 program, The Situation Room. The monarch said the Saki Fulani enlisted machineries who wrecked havoc on the community on Saturday night. Residents put their numbers of casualty at over 50. The Oyo State Police Command said only 11 persons were confirmed dead. The traditional ruler said it was the Saki Fulani that was evicted from this land that came to attack us. He sent these people that collected money to fight war to attack us on Saturday and entered the town around 11 p.m. Ask if he had any evidence of the attack. He said, no, we don't have any information to that effect. We have been trying our best and our people have been preparing for about three months that they would come, but we didn't have any solution. What made us to suffer a great defeat was that we didn't have good amenities to fight. We didn't have money to buy good and modern ammunitions and we don't have the type of ammunition that they used. They were very sophisticated. The police also didn't have the kind of amenities the gunmen which invaded were using. We don't have any amenities to fight them. We too can't we too can buy the weapon to defend ourselves, but it is very expensive. If we see the money, we will buy them. How they get this money we don't know. In spite of the situation, Oba they Adeo said the community still has confidence in the ability of the government to secure its subject. We are still calling on the government to assist us, he said. But the senator representing Ogun, West Tola, yesterday raised alarm over fleeing Igago, Fulani headsmen killers, making way into other states, a war, North local government area of Ogun state after the reported killing of residents in Igogo. The senator, who is deeply concerned about the current spree of killing, said this must be dealt with immediately and has alerted the security operative so they can begin to watch and put things in order. According to him, reports indicate that three persons were killed already in Imokon, local government area by the fleeing Fulani headsmen from Igongo on Saturday, on Sunday, I beg your pardon. So this is what is happening right now. This is what is going on. The traditional monarch has said that there is something wrong and these people are already on ground to wreak havoc. Yes, that the Saki Fulani that was sent, I remember Sunday Boho sent him out of the place. And so this man has promised to come back and wreak havoc. And indeed, true to his word, he was really true to it. He came back. 
God's machineries, God people to come back and wreak havoc on innocent lives. But the thing, but the thing that um, you know that is going on that they fail to realize, if somebody starts this kind of thing and there is nothing done about it, it will continue. If nothing is done, if nothing is done, that's why Nigerians, every hand must be on deck. We cannot keep quiet and allow these people to do whatever they want to do. We have a duty to safeguard ourselves. We have a duty not to allow them, you know, commit us into untold suffering, hardship, and we must stand up to defend ourselves. We have a duty, and that duty is for us to stand up and say no. You know, they are aware. They said the weapon they use. So who is giving them this money? Who is giving them this money? How do they get this weapon? Who is procuring it for them? How does it get sent into the country? It tells you our borders are really porous. It's very, very porous, you know, and there are nobody, people who truly are working to ensure that there is, you know, safety and everyone is, lives is protected. The government of Nigeria is actually really, truly doing almost nothing about what is on ground. Muhammad Buhari has no ability to safeguard the people and is not apologetic about it. He's even proud, telling Nigerians, calling their bluff, do your worst. It ought not to be so. You and I have a duty to ensure that nobody, you know, continue on this track and do this evil to us. We must stand up. We must defend ourselves. We must give ourselves opportunity to live because these people are not taking chances at all. These people are not taking chances at all. They are going around killing people, causing untold suffering, hardship on people. It ought not to be so. It ought not to be so. The traditional rulers said that they've been aware, they've been planning, they've been preparing, they, they, they suspected that this was going to happen, but how they did not know. They've been preparing for the past three months, but when these people came, if they had ammunition as well, they would not be able to defend themselves. But where you have no arms and somebody is shooting sporadically, you can only take cover. You can't use cutlass to go and meet somebody who has, who has guns on them, no. This was how, you know, in those days they were able to invade Nigeria, uh, I mean Africa. Because then they came with the gunpowder, you see. That's, that's how they were able to invade into Africa. And the colonial days started, you see. What they had, uh, uh, things that, they could, that could help them before we are not the modern day facilities. Leave us a comment we'd like to hear from you. Please don't forget to like us, share, subscribe. Click on the notification button so you can get all our latest news. Thank you. God bless you. Bye for now.